Welcome to another one-on-one segment. And today is a very special day. Um, when corruption seems to be the order of the day, it's only a matter of time before that institution get the demise that it wants. This is the story of the Nigerian Police Academy, how it started with harassing queer young men, which sparked the NSAS protest in October 2020. Queer young men has been targeted and have been assaulted by the Nigerian Police Academy. This is the story of our guest on today's segment. Before we invite our guest or before we bring our guest into the studio, we have a special performance by our American Nigerian artist. Daddy De Leon. Our community needs to re-strategize and one way for us to re-strategize is to individually, personally invest in ourselves. I'm so blessed and so humbled to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show and I hope you guys enjoy my performance. The name of the song that I'm going to do is called Look. It's from my debut album, Un Martin Diorage. It's streaming everywhere you can listen to music. Enjoy. This is a bad thing. Yeah. Oh. Big Nick, you got another one with this one. Bad boy, nine. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. See me walking. My eyes are red. My horns are showing. Don't come close to me. I've got a reputation for possessing everyone. Stealing souls and having fun, my curse is never done. The more I take, the more I want. Don't beg and plead, I cry on your knees. Let's be clear. You can say your prayers, but nothing's gonna save you from my plan. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Necrophilia eating your skin while your heart is beating. You're suffocated, I'm elevated with joy. I'll from the blood you shed so far. It won't be long, though it's been hard. God bless your broken heart. The moon is full, my will is done. If you try to escape, it won't change the way. Stay your way. Cause you'll never get away. Now that your mind, everything is what I'll say. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Yeah. That was so much fun. More of that, please. More of that. More yes, of that. I really enjoyed it. If you are Thank just you joining so us. You are welcome. If you're just joining us, this is one on one segment on Q Root Talk. And the person who has been performing is that big, that daddy, 
the Leonco, the daddy, the Leonco. I am so sorry. I'm going to make sure no, I know okay. you. No, it's no problem. Please don't apologize. It's okay. Your camera is off. So then, once again, and today we have a special guest with me. Our special guest has a story that involves the Nigerian police and the Nigerian police academy. Like we know, the Nigerian police has been one of the worst police forces in the whole globe not just being worse they have showed their arrogance and they've shown their nonchalant attitude to the world they have been targeting queer lgbtq community members with the anti-gay law which presently still is in the nigerian constitution which they use to fill in their ill-filtered belly with money this is the story of our guest and right now i'm going to be inviting our guest over welcome mr raymond Please introduce yourself, so welcome. Okay, yeah. yeah, sure. Actually, um, um, I'm Raymond Junior from over there. I'm from Edo State. Um, I'm a stylist. I'm into spa, massage therapist, and so on. So um, actually, I, I want to share my story here on Kiri Talk. So uh, actually, it was last year. In uh, April, I guess so. April, yeah, if I can remember, really. last year, April. Um, yeah, that was April, either seventh or eighth. I was in an apartment, um, with a group of friends. Actually, we had a party the night before that morning, so I was sleeping when I got a call from a lady on a number door. So I pick up. It was like, oh, hello, good morning. We exchanged pleasantry, and she told me that she's blessing. Her name is Blessing. Somebody gave her my number that she wanted to make her hair. And I was like, ah, this is a lockdown period. There's no way I can make your hair without going to the shop to get my stuff. And moreover, although there's a little movement, and I don't know whereby I'll be caught while trying to open the shop. You understand? So the lady said, okay, should should she come over? I said, no. So what's going to happen is that I'll go, rush down to the shop, then get my stuff, then meet her up at any location that she wants. Then she said, yes, that she's okay with that. I said, okay. I just have, I just have, I just have, sorry to interrupt. I just have a quick question. So when people normally call you and say, you know, Raymond, I want to make my hair, do they put a deposit? Do you have a method of screening these people to know if they actually want to have their hair done or they just call in randomly? Oh, not, uh, actually we have a plan for that but i don't know how everything works that very morning it was just like a high run out of luck that they won't lie to you so on a normal like, day on a normal day you will screen day, your clients I screen, yes like who gave you my number then i will hand the call then make sure that i try to reach the person that gave that person my number but on that very day there was nothing like that. I was so in haste because I was so fucking broke. I wouldn't want to lie to you. You understand? Like a call from mom. I need this. I need that. And I was so, I was running low on cash. So I had no choice. And I was like, thank God something came up. You understand? So I was so excited. Yes. Like I want to go and make the hair. So that's some little change will be in my pocket. So actually that money, I haven't brushed. I haven't been short. I haven't freshened up. I was still like, from the way I slept last night, I was still like that till that morning, you understand? So I was like, okay, let me quickly brush. I said, no, I don't want this person to change her mind. So I rushed down to the office. I told my friend that I'm coming. I told, I, I told him that when I'm coming back, I'll get some food stuff from the house, you understand? So I got to the shop, I picked up my stuff. Then I called the person like, hello, uh, I'm done picking up my stuff. Where should I meet you up? And... She's like, okay, meet me up at a high fly filling station to airport road. Then you stop before the um, estate police station. I said, okay. So I took a cab, then straight down to the location. When I get there, I called the lady. I was like, hello, ma. I'm at the high fly filling station. You understand? She was like, okay. Mm -hmm. She's coming. She's coming, though, but she's sending her two brothers to come and pick me. 
you understand? At that like, time, did you did you f- feel anything fishy when she says, ah, 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 okay, I'm sending my two brothers to come meet you? Didn't you ask why two brothers? Why do two people no, have to come no. pick me up? No. Funny enough, I never even sent anything. And at that moment, I didn't even know if something like that was even going on. Do you understand? At that Got period you, of because time, it wasn't like a hook up. Yes, I, I wasn't aware that police are doing massive arrest in Benin then. I wouldn't want to lie to you. You understand? I was not aware. Because actually, before this whole issue came up, a friend called me. I saw a friend. Um, I saw a friend status saying, ah, guy, you are going to pay me back my 100K whenever I get to see you. You understand? I was like, and I put a call through the person. Like, ah, alpha guy, what happened? He said, eh, uh, he go give a name to police, blah, 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 this, that. I said, I don't understand. All these things they out for you guys didn't even tell me something like that. Happened. But he didn't tell me that it was a massive arrest. You understand? Mitchell, you understand? He didn't tell me such things. So that I'll be careful. Stop. I'm on call. Just give us, so let's just take a five minutes. Attend to your niece or your cousin. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. Mitchell, what happened? If you are just joining us, we are still on the one-on-one segment with Raymond telling his story on what happened and on April of 2020. Over to you, Mr. Raymond. Okay. So, sorry for the interruption. So, before, um, so the guy, I called the guy, like, what happened? He was like, and this, that, this, that. Yeah. He didn't even tell me that something like that was, he said, okay, when he gets out from the police station, he's going to brief me. So we never had the chance to meet. So you understand? So I didn't really get the full story, how the whole thing operates or how the mm-hmm. way that. So it happened that I fell victim that very morning. So when I get there, when the lady said, she's sending two of her brothers to come pick me. I was like, <laughs> I'm falling off the street. Of the eye fly, the street closer to the eye I fly. The, let me say the house is there, should not be more than five. So I'm wondering that why should you send somebody out when you can easily tell me the house number? You understand? Let me just walk True. straight to the gate, then come in. So I said, okay, let me just relax my nerves. Since I wasn't thinking anything, my mind didn't even flash back to that conversation I had with my friend before. So they came, actually. They, they drove down, so they stopped somewhere. I never even take note that they were the one inside the car. I just stopped, like, um, uh, far from me. So they walked down, they were on black, black, like, hello, I say hi. Are you Raymond? I said, yes. I say, uh, they said, uh, our sister sent us to come and pick you up. I was like, okay, let's go. And the next thing, they just grabbed me below my trouser, like, you are under arrest. The other thing was just like drama. I said, is this a joke? I just have a very specific question. Were they wearing uniform? How, do you, how were you sure that they were police officers? Was there any form of identification to know these are police, true police officers? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Yeah, okay. I get to later, you understand. So just give me time. So when the government child, uh, like, um, guy come with us, you're under arrest. I wanted to drag with them, like, you know, but at the time, I said, okay, let me just calm down, not to make the matter worse, you understand. So immediately, when I entered the vehicle, I saw, the, apart from the driver, I saw another lady sitting at the front seat with the driver, you understand. Why yeah. the other two guys, I'm in between them, you understand. They were like, eh, we don't catch you today. We don't think we will not define you. Like, or like, we don't think how they said eh, so a different guys have dropped my number with them. They've been trying to look for a way to catch me, but there's no way. So now they use a lady. So that's where they now use the phrase, something must kill a man. And now, since we can't catch you <laughs> the other way around, now we've caught you the other way around. I was like, no problem. So immediately, um, they asked me for my phone, they collected my phone from me. Then the lady, that's the lady at the front, now collected the phone from me. She was like, open the phone. I put my fingerprint and the phone open. They were going through my phone. So although we're not that too far from the police station, Yekoba police station, 
you understand? So they drove down there. Then still, they were, their hands were still glued to my trouser. You understand? Like they don't want me to run away. So we come down from the car. Then they took me to an uncompleted building in the police, uh, what's it called, the academy there. You understand? So when we get there, they sat me down. The two guys were still glued to me on the chair also. They were like, eh, so now, now, nah. now, nah, they do everything uh, eh, government team they don't do. And I say, I don't understand. Which of them they do? They were just like be, uh, beating around the bush. I say, sir, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Just, just make it play. Like, go straight to the point. They say, gay stuff, this, that. I say, ah, I'm not to but then, so at, at first I said I wasn't, you understand, because I was scared, you understand. So mm-hmm. I have to say I'm not. So they got through my phone, they saw some evidence, blah blah blah. Because they normally I know how police operate in Nigeria. Whenever I had a chat throughout the night, when I'm going out in the morning, I make sure that I flushed out all the last night's chats, you understand. So unfortunately for me, that call was the first call I received. I had, I've never really settled down. I wasn't planned on going out that morning, you understand? So that's why I still have those chats on my phone. They saw everything. And I still have some few friends that I was supposed to meet that morning, like two of them, you understand? The dads, when they start chatting with those ones, they were like, hey, okay, what's going to happen now? Since you are, we've seen the evidence. I said, okay, so give us five more people like five people, I say five people, I say it won't be possible because I'm this kind of person, when I want to do a walk up with somebody, I don't go to your DM and start chatting you straight, like how far, how far can we meet? You understand? So whenever I do that, they look, the thing sounds strange when they receive the test, like ah, this guy doesn't do this. Definitely something is fishing. It's they off. come for me. You understand? They come for me. I don't come for, I don't go for them. You understand? So they started chatting. That's why I can't give anybody's numbers out. They were like, okay, don't worry, we'll do it ourselves. They say, if you don't do it, if you refuse to do it, then we'll beat you up, call your family people. Ah, when they make sure the family people say, my dear, if it is that one for my mind, I was just like, oh, sorry, that was a wrong keyword to even use when it comes to that part. Because <laughs> they are aware. <laughs> so I have nothing to hide. And that's the only. Uh, what's it called? That's everything that scares me. So since they were, sorry, it's a zero point for them. So I kept quiet. They were chatting with some guys on my phone. Actually, they were able to chat with three of them. So that three, one is a uh, is a guy that I've not met with before. I was planning to send the guy somewhere later that day. Then the other That's two, true. the other two. The other two was somebody I've known for so long. Then the other one, the other one, the, the guy I left his house dialing money. You understand? So that was it. So they tried the guy. The guy said, okay, he's coming, blah, blah, blah. This, that. No. Hey, give me a minute. No problem. We we'll just take a break. Our community needs to re-strategize. And one way for us to re-strategize is to individually, personally, invest in ourselves. So okay. if you're just watching, we are still on the same matter. They took the cocoa of the matter and I say police, they target people, especially queer successive people. And this is the story of our guest. Over to you, Mr. Raymond. So actually, that day, ah, my dear, it's a, when I was really, uh, seriously, when I was inside that police station, I won't call it police station because I believe it's an office that was still under construction, you understand? Like, it was right there, right there, they were even telling me, like, and this one was like, let's take, let's take him to, uh, what's it called, our office, like, I was like, there's no office here. Like, they've already shared the uncompleted building. Like, this one has its own office. This is everybody. And there was, there's these two little, little chairs there. You understand? And they have matters to attend to. That's where they take people to. So, they were luckily to chat those three guys up. So, after that, they now took me downstairs. So, I don't know what they call this, that position, or that DPO, or whatever. And I don't even care to know. You understand so they took me to the higher rank officer uh, office 
it was still down this that uh, what's it called undergoing uh, what's it called the construction that is still going on. So it was still down the building. So we got there. The guy was like, eh, "Are you?" So now this person, I know the fine since when I never see. They were like, "Yes, ah." And I can't take cash and guy it was not teasing me like, ah, "Guy, you strong go." They don't tell you, they don't defend you, they don't see you. So now they don't cash and like, they now stroke my name from the list because they have a lot of list like, ah, back and front of full cash shit. Wow. Jesus. And with phone numbers, their house address. I don't know how come they arrive at such, uh, what's it called, details. So Obviously, I think since your situation, since they can get people like you and then they make them, blackmail like, them to list other people's names and that's how they get these numbers. Because it's, it's the business for these corrupt officers. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So they were like, uh, we have start calling them. I say, I don't have a, I don't have card on my phone. They bought cards. They recharged my phone. I should call, or what's it called? Uh, the guy's name was uh, Solomon. I should call Solomon. I called that one. The phone then, uh, the guy didn't pick up. The guy hung up. Then I called the other one too. The three of them were really, really in luck at first. <laughs> Let me not lie to you. They were in luck at first. The phone rang and nobody was picking up. Then the other guy that picked, the other guy that picked, that one said that he's at Ring Road, he's buying a tailoring material. And when he's done, he's going to call me back. You understand? Fine. I called the guy. I wouldn't lie about that. They used me to call the guy on that duress. You understand? Gotcha. So, you understand? so I called the guy. The guy was like, okay, later. I said, okay, no problem. That is number one. Then I put that one's name, phone number, one side. Then the other guy, they've been trying to reach the other guy. Then later, one of the other guy, the person that I was supposed to meet later in the day, the new friend that one pick up like eh, okay you come and meet me also so and so so please when he gets there he's gonna call me also ah at that point of at that point i was so so fucking weak like i wish these people won't pick or even make it to that location i was given so the thing go that way and they not allow me to read like okay now call your family i see my family they say yes <laughs> I said, I should call my family. They say, yeah. They say, hey, you know, call your family before. This is the, said, my family doesn't even have anything to even say. This is my life. It's my choice. <laughs> it's short, it's my road. So let me walk it. They don't have anything to say. They were like, eh, they should be ashamed of me. Blah, 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 this time. So I picked the phone and I was calling. Oh, uh, what's it called? I was calling my, uh, my uncle, my youngest uncle. That one didn't pick up. So you understand? Then the other one, they asked me to call another person. I tried, but I just called wrong number on my phone, actually, because I don't want them to even know that I was in that kind of situation. You understand? Like, I like to deal with my problem alone. I don't like stressing people, whatever. You understand? So later now, when they give me the phone, I don't know, something came up. They now, the guy that was with me, the guy walked away from the office. So I quickly go on my WhatsApp. I texted all the people they chatted with, I copied the message and forwarded it to them like, I'm in the police station, don't pick a call or call this number. You understand? See, for that notice, I signed it as a warning. I'm in the police station, I'm arrested. You understand? So I was happy that, because they read the message, you understand? I was so happy that at that particular point in time, there was no response. I was so happy. I said, oh, thank God, at least I've saved you. So a brother and a sister. So and I called the guy back. I said, I'm sorry, sir, I'm done. And I said, okay. So I there are people coming. I said, yes, they are coming. They're not rest. So they're not collected the phone from me. They locked me inside one of their, uh, what's it called, senior uh, officer's office. Then they went downstairs. Then when they were downstairs, I don't know what happened. Then later, I just saw almost three of them, they walked back to the room like, are you okay? Are you mad? You are not serious. You are not ready to live here. Don't worry, you will stay here one month, one year. This, that, this, that, this, that. I was so scared. Like, what did I do? Do you know what those guys did? <laughs> to my greatest surprise, they forward back my message to that phone. Even inside that message, I told them that my, the phone is no longer with me. It's with a police officer. 
the four bags in Messi. So those ones got because now they now have they asked me to even remove the uh, what's it called the password on my phone so that they can easily access my everything phone, everything so the message came in and they read it they were like they want to start beating me the one of them said no they should not touch him is that this is blah, 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 blah. so i was so pissed off i was so pissed off so along the line the two of two guys now called me they now called me like hey, where are we meeting I was like, I think they get my message. Is someone else that read that message or what? So now the police are saying, Excuse me, they are ready now. Let's go and pick the person. I followed them down to the location. They picked two of them. Then the last person, that one, what really happened? That one called, like, uh, uh, Sorry, I'm not in Benin. I'm not in Benin. I'm out of Benin for now. I was so happy. So they picked those two guys. And bring them to the station alongside with me. Then we, when we get there, they were like, "Well, uh, they were not asking me. Those guys were not asking me what happened." I said, uh, "I sent you guys a message. Didn't you get my message? You said yeah, that I got the message. That I think I was joking." <laughs> I said, "Do I look like a comedian? I don't understand you guys. You guys have a golden opportunity at your fingertips. If me, I have somebody that did that for me. Do you think I'll be here?" Uh, connecting to you guys, uh, connecting you guys to the station. So you guys, you guys, you are so just so fucking dumb. I was so pissed with them. I started exchanging words with them. I was so fucking angry because I know I was so so I was feeling guilty at the time, and at the same time, I feel that I did my best. You understand? So you honestly did your best to inform them about the situation you were going through, yeah. and I felt they weren't yeah. able to comprehend the simple text message. Yeah. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. So, so, so like, how yeah. did you leave the situation? How did you leave the yeah. whole matter? So, so what happened? They now, they now said, and now we've got two people, so we'll let you go now. I said, okay, thank you. They were like, huh? Not like that, too. I said, how? They say they will take me first to the Oga part that is in charge of the case. So they took me upstairs again. This one is a already finished uh, building. Normal police station. Police yeah. station. Yeah, police station. The guy was there. He's an old man, like eh. So they will not put us uh, behind the wall. They say we should stay close to the wall. The back uh, the background was white that. They should on camera. I don't want to feed yours. Like that's when we now started being like the three of us. Stop begging, sir. Sorry, sir. Blah blah blah. We won't do it today. This kind of thing, you know. Stop pleading so that our face won't go on viral. Yeah, you understand. So they now, although that thing was to threaten us, it wasn't going to go viral. There was never any record that was going to be sent on here. I wish I knew that. Like, we won't allow them to say, "Oh yeah, let's do it if it is that one." So it was later that we not one of the police officers was not telling us that don't worry, nothing like that will happen. You understand? The guy was whispering to my ear, like don't worry, nothing like that will happen. But don't just feel remorse like you are begging. So that's when I need down. We started begging them. They're gonna say, okay, just take them down. They call their people to come and build them with the sum of 250,000. Uh, <laughs> I shot For each them. of you. Age of four, 250,000 naira. I was like, <laughs> I can't save. I didn't want up, up to such amount. And that was the period I was trying to get a shop. You understand? Because I do massage, pedicure, facial, stuff like that. I was trying to put, to set up something to be doing. And that money was in my account. You understand? So when they said that thing like 250, I said, I don't have that money, Oga. Okay? If it is say or anywhere you guys want to take me to court, let me go there. My quarter will look for lawyer or I'll cite my JTM, my JTM, whatever. So that was what was on my mind then. So they took us down, like, uh, yeah, they start bargaining from 250 to 200, from 200 to 150, from 150 to 100, from 100 to 80, from 80 to 70. I said, I don't have. I don't have because I don't even want to spend one era in that kind of case at all. I was so pissed off. The other thing was taking time. Like uh, it was almost six o'clock. This thing happened around uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. We we're still there like to six. Then they say uh, if it's not 60,000 era, that they should return me to 
sell blah blah blah. At that point, they said then I should off my clothes, remove my shoe, remove all my wallet, anything that I was putting everything that I should put them up. I removed my what's it called? Okay, no, I was on short sneaker. I didn't remove it. I removed my wristwatch. I removed my shoe. I dropped my bag. My equipment was with, was with them. My chain. I removed it. Then my wallet. Inside my purse, I have almost like eleven thousand something inside my wallet. So they collected it. They recorded it down. So so amount. You understand? Was mm-hmm. with me. So then I said I should remove my shirt. <laughs> I said. Sir, if it is this one, we will just die here. Me, remove my shirt. I say, I can only remove my shirt in front of queers. That's why I tell her. I say, if you are not a queer, except you are a queer, that's the only way you can see my body. If you are not a queer, I come back. They say, I see, I even see the game out. I say, sir, I can't open my body. That's it. So you expect me to open my body now, go lie on that floor in that cell. I say, I can't do it too. So we now, we are dragging the whole issue like a... Poo, I don't go poo, poo, I don't go poo. At the end, they said I should go like that. So at the time, they were not bad I don't know what they discussed, what they were discussing about. So they asked them to go and bring me out. Okay. You understand? Well, the one they were taking me to the cell, they tell them, uh, uh, the inmates there, they say, please, oh, this is a VIP, oh, people should not touch him, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh. This is uh, <laughs> this is your this one. <laughs> so the letter came, they brought me out like, we happy. Uh, 70,000. I said, okay, oh I don't have. I said, the money that I have was in, what's it called? 30,000 naira. They said they can collect it to call somebody. That's when I remember, and I call my boss. She's a female. She's aware of my sexuality already. So I call her. She was like, how come? Why are you letting them catch you now? And I narrate the story that look at what happened. You see, why you not let me know now? Why you not delete your chat? That was not advising me. I said, madam, it's already too late for those advice now. It's a way out now. That's what we are talking about. So then she ran down to the station, like with her connection, she was trying to get me out free. You understand? Because she's married to, uh, what's it called? One Inugi in the Benin Kingdom. You understand? So that's part of the connection. The thing really work, didn't really work out because that stuff was no legal operation that they were doing. It was legal. You understand? Yes, it was an illegal witch yeah, so even when I was in that set, I find out that the people that were inside that set during that corona period, they were not supposed to arrest anybody and put them together. You know, they were talking about uh, distance, uh, whatever, what they call it, what you want. Yeah, whatever. distancing, so they, isolating. So they were not supposed to keep two people together <laughs> safe at that time. So I had, uh, when a siren was coming from the gates, they were like, we are quickly, quickly, like, to evacuate all the cell, all the uh, inmates in that cell, like, so that when the organ comes in, they won't be able to see anybody in that cell. Not, that's what they did. Like, so oh, definitely, wow. what the arrest they were doing that period was not recorded or anything in any way related to the higher authority. So that means all the money that people paid for bells were getting into the hands of these officers. You understand? They're just using people like us just to gain money. You understand? I was so annoying. So when they brought me out, I was like, eh, my, mother, my boss was not telling me that, eh, ah, what do we do now? Look at the amount they are saying, that is 70,000 naira. I said, Mama, I don't have 70,000 naira. Moreover, the money with me is the money I want to use to open my shop. She was like, okay, I should try and bring out something. And I said, no. I said, no. So she now, I told her that she should just go. I will sort myself out. So she now left. She said, okay. Take care of yourself. I said, no problem. Just go. I don't want to involve you in anything. But the husband was angry. You understand? that? Why should she, why should she involve herself in my matter? You understand the kind of thing? So later, later, to cut the long story short, I agree. I said, okay, I'm going to give you guys 60,000 naira. Because time was going fast. And I, I don't want to split that cell. Ah, God. That is a horrible place. So... They asked me to do the uh, transaction. I told them that I don't have mobile help. So they have to soup me outside. The POS people, they've closed. So they return me back to the circle. They normally close six o'clock, the people that were in charge of the case then. So they took me, I slept in the cell that night. The early in the morning, I was on that shout and calling them, please, they should let me be out of this place. I will give them the 60,000 naira. So they brought me out. 
he bought food from me for my money. You understand? I hate. Then uh, what's it called? We went to the POS. They will make the drawer from my boat bank. You understand? So I give it to them. They were like, "Can somebody should come and sign for me?" I say sign. That's when I call one of my youngest uncle. Down now came along. He signed. You understand? Then from there, that's how I was released. Actually, even when I was released. My brother took me home to go isolate me. I was locked in the room like for three days before I could voice because people. of the COVID situation. Yes, you understand, like they are scared. The people we don't meet from inside that place, they don't want to understand and stuff. You understand? Even when I came out, my family did not say anything, like they were like this, they didn't say anything because first they are aware of my sexuality. You understand? Yes, so, the only thing they could do is that. Just be careful. We'll be praying for you. So I'm okay. I saw that I have the support of my family, although not full, not full support. Like I have eighty percent. You understand. So I'm free to do what I want, but I just have to use my what, my brain. You understand. So that's how the whole thing goes. And after then, they start calling me that I should come and I should be reporting to the station every day. But I tell you that me, I can't do that thing. They say okay, if not. I should go and do uh, what we call. I should go and renounce myself in the court of law that I'm no longer gay. Okay. You understand? So I can do it. It's such a sad. It's such a sad story. Not to make this episode so long, I'm going to cut you here. But I'm just going to ask you one final question, and then okay. I'm going to allow Daddy La uncle to give some opinions and his last word and we're going to close um did you reach out to any lgbtq ngos we do have lgbtq ngos and organizations in nigeria how uh, and the second question that the follow-up question is how did you try to help community members after your experience not to fall victims of the same thing okay that's a good that's a very good question you understand um try, yes, and please try to speak question. a little bit louder so that we can hear you okay okay yeah your first question said if we have a uh, lgbtq community or ngo right yes okay, we, have them, we have a lot of them but not in benin do you get me you understand because i'm not sure that they are functioning in this edo state and it's so annoying you understand? I was so, so fucking, fucking angry. I, I, I was even regretting that. I wish I knew that such case will arrive in the future like this. I would have stayed back in Abuja, but I trust Abuja. Their other NGO are very, very active there. Do you understand? I don't even know what's wrong with Edo State. You understand? Then secondly, after um, my release from that station, I tried to reach some of my friends, like how far look at what's going on here. That's when and I make the thing publicly like this thing serious. So guys, be careful. You understand? If somebody calls you because and I know how they operate, you understand. I tell them if somebody calls you from such so time, guy, don't go to see anybody. If you want to see somebody, it should be late at night. That is if you are the type that walk at night that like going out late, you understand. But if not, don't avoid seeing anybody during the day. You understand to avoid all this kind of mess, especially you guys that are saying, I don't want my family to know this. I don't. So, to avoid such rubbish, just stay up. And whenever somebody calls you, make sure you verify as a measure that you investigate the person that gave the number to that person, even the person that even connected that person to that person to you. You understand? I even say, do a video call. Can we have a video call so I can see where you are? Mm -mm, mm -mm. not with the way they operate you can't even do a video call they will take you to a city they have a suitable room there they will make your uh -huh. person to laugh to smile so that um, i didn't even advise any of them to even do that if somebody called you ask for the person's facebook name since it was during the massive arrest definitely they wouldn't want to release their what's it called you understand just to be sure of that person go on facebook although i know that Having mutual friends on Facebook does not guarantee someone's safety. But at that particular point in time, the top, the stuff that was going on, it would help very well at that time. So I really bring them. Some, some of them, I even visit them. 
you understand. I visit them at their places, then lecture them that look at how the thing happened, look at how they approach, look at how the guys look. Because they were like, they were, let me say they were six or seven numbers. She understand. I described them. But now I don't have that picture again. So at that time, it didn't really go viral. But I was the second, let me say, I was among the second or the third badge that was arrested for such stuff. As the second badge or third badge of people that were arrested massively in Benin. And at that time, the thing hasn't go viral. So when we left the uh, police station with my other friends that was being arrested too, so everybody spread in mail. That's when everybody got to know that something like that it's Benin, happening in Benin, Benin, Benin city. Nigeria. And nobody outside the Benin, outside Benin, should visit Benin for now until the whole matter is resolved. So that's all. It's been it's been very interesting having you on this segment. Uh, your story is really a very critical story that needs to be told. I'm just going to allow the daddy, daddy la uncle to chip in some things, and then I'll give the final remark, and we'll call it off. Yeah, it's Daddy De Leon Corps. And, um, you know, it's hearing this story is so wild because um, I, I remember some years back when Nigeria allegedly had laws to where if someone was LGBTQ, you could be put in prison or I think the penalty was death. I don't know how true that is, but they were advertising here in the United States that they had laws in Nigeria that were putting LGBTQ people in prison and even killing them now so you know it's it, what i hate to look at it from a just standpoint but it's good to see that people are no longer being you know uh sought after that way this is a terrible thing that's happened but if you look at it from a political and almost from a um a economical standpoint this is what happens when you have places that are drowning in poverty you meet people that want to prey on weaker people for money and it's just unfortunate. So I think the more we help each other get rise up, the more we help each other stick together as LGBTQ people, we can sort of have a um, antidote so that we don't fall victim to this. And just to, just to give a bit of advice, it's always good to get your deposit because these people will refuse to send a deposit. They, they don't want, they would not want to uh, send you money because they're, the point of this whole thing is to get money from you. So making sure that all your clients pay a hefty deposit will for sure get this thing, um, will remedy this situation, I think. Our community needs to re-strategize. And one way for us to re-strategize is to individually, personally, invest in ourselves and if you're just joining us this is the one-on-one -on -one segment with q talk and performing is daddy de leonco over to you yes so happy to be here and thank you enjoy the performance i'm going to be doing the number for my debut album which is titled unmatin diaraj it's streaming everywhere the name of this song is called lessons i really hope you enjoy it I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for letting me do this segment on your show. More life, more life. Stop it right there before you make the mistake of your life. You tell me you're scared to take the next step in love so you need one more night but i don't want to be the one because i know you don't want to fall in love how can you say you want to play having a fair with me and say your vows the next day you want some of my love Enough for the both of us. Caution, caution, infidelity, infidel. Tell me how can we make you fall when you already have someone you're around? Just a little dumb, infidelity, infidel. If 
infidelity, infidelity. Infidelity, infidelity. Stop it, don't you dare. How can you risk it all just for a night with me? I should just disappear before I make you regret. Just think twice, I am trying. Cause I don't wanna play this game. If we do, you will fall out of love's frame. Are you sure you break your happy home? I'll leave you all alone so you should stay where you belong. You want some of my love. Enough for the both of us. Caution, caution, infidelity, infidel. Tell me, how can me and you fuck when you already have someone you're up? Just a little dumb, infidelity, infidelity. Yo, if you don't know already, my name is Daddy Dillion Corp, and this is Lessons. Hope you feel it. He just hit my phone late at home. He just asking me to come through, knowing that my old lady is sleeping next to me. He said he don't really care, can't fight the feeling. He said it's okay if you choose me. I think he been tripping just lately. Old lady going through my phone like, baby, why'd you do this to me? Thought I had a solid one. Infidelity, I guess you only want. You want some of my love. Enough for the both of us. Caution, caution, infidelity, infidelity. Yeah. So that was lessons from my debut album, Um, my team, the Arise is streaming everywhere, y'all. Hit me up on social media at BBYBKR underscore, Sabotage Supreme underscore. Anywhere that you can find me, I would love to get to know you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Ciao. It's been an amazing time. We've all heard. So if you are in Nigeria, not just in Benin, any part of Nigeria, Lagos, Portacot, same things happening. Corrupt officers are witch hunting LGBTQ communities. This is the time for the NGOs, the queer NGOs in Lagos and in Abuja to extend their activism, to extend their programs to other, you know, smaller regions like Benin, like Wari, like Portacot. You know, sublet. where sublet where people cannot be reached because this is one person now whose story can be heard because he had the connection, he is successful, he had the money to build himself. Imagine the person that is hawking Akara or selling bread or does not have any form of connection. What will be the story of that person? What will be the end? This is a story we need to learn from and we need to start speaking out. Thank you so much for watching us and thank you so much for liking, subscribing and peace out.